Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Before we bring on today's wonderful guest and relative of ATP, uh, I want to remind everybody out there in ATP land, if you haven't done it yet, please take out your cell phone and text the word TRUTH and send it to 88202, the number 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to all of our content at ATP, including shows like today. Did you do it yet? Good for you. So our very special guest today, you know from ATP and from all of the wonderful things she's done, it's Annie Cyrus, the founder of Live Up to Freedom, a former child bride who escaped the tyranny of the very religious in Iran. And she's an American citizen who is an expert on all things relating to the jihad movement worldwide. Welcome, Annie. Thank you so much, Barry, for having me. So let's start off with um, today's topic, which is all everything uh, Afghanistan, and it's, and it's what we should all be talking about. Um, President Biden said just a few weeks ago that the Afghan army was well-trained, well-equipped, and had hundreds of thousands of more fighters than the Taliban, which was characterized as a ragtag army of, well, people from the Middle Ages. Um, he said he was not worried about the stability of the country after he had announced the American troop withdrawal and everything would just be fine. Within a few days of the withdrawal, as we know, the National Army collapsed, troops just dropped their weapons and ran away, and the Taliban <laughs> rolled into Kabul virtually unopposed. Annie, what happened? Well, a few things. The very first thing that happened is what we always do in America, which is underestimating the Islamic terrorist groups in Middle East. For example, Taliban. Oh, they're just a bunch of people. They're not big enough for anyone to worry about. And we underestimate that they have countries such as Islamic Republic of Iran backing them up. For example, two days before they conquered Kabul, they had a personal private meeting with uh, Zarif, who is the foreign minister of Islamic Republic of Iran. So that was the first mistake that Biden administration made. Secondly, no matter how much we train uh, the army of Afghanistan, they're not an army. They're just Afghan people who decided to try to protect their country. It's not like they go through academy like our country. They couldn't just be left alone overnight and figure it out. Number three, I'm sure you know, all the weapons that Biden was talking about never actually ended up in hands of military or army of Afghanistan. Halfway there, it was all confiscated by Taliban. So you put those three together, this happens. So how could Biden have been so wrong? Or was it just a PR stunt and he hoped it would be true, not knowing whether it was or wasn't? Well, Barry, let me answer your question with a question. When was the last time Biden was correct? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Biden administration is wrong on every single aspect since the day they came to White House. And I don't, I, I, on a serious note, though, no, I don't think uh, Biden didn't know these are all uh, wrong estimates or wrong thoughts. It's just Biden didn't care. Biden is a huge part, as a puppet of it, huge part of the unholy alliance being left in Islam. So he knew exactly what's coming. He just went on camera and said exactly what he said, just like every other time he had talking points, he followed the talking points. But deep down, they all knew. The entire Biden administration knew exactly what's coming. They just didn't care. It might be why he was hustled away from the press conference, Annie, and he wasn't allowed when I say that, somebody's telling him what to do, as he often points out, they tell me not to take questions, ran away, has never taken a question since. You so, mean when he says he's going to be in trouble? <laughs> I, I love I the whispering part when he does that. That's just weird. Um, so on a very, very serious note, and this is truly horrific, um, especially for someone like you to talk about it. The Taliban are going door to door now, seizing girls as young as 12, and they're being given to the Taliban fighters as sex slaves. Um, you know that's true. I know it's true. Uh, I can't believe there's not an avalanche 
with the world so upset. Um, it's the 21st century, and yet it seems the Taliban are living in the seventh century. I know you know the answer to this. It's in the Quran that makes this kind of insanity and inhumanity legal in that religion. Can you tell us about it? Of course, and, and let me just say this, it's not just Taliban who's living in the seventh century, it's entire Islamic society, because Islam has never been touched. It's the still original from 1400 years ago. On that, yes, there are many verses in Quran and many hadith that approves of what Taliban is doing today. Number one, we can refer to chapter 3350, which says it is completely halal or allowed uh, for Muslim men to take women, it refers to them as your right hands possess, which is sex as slave, as trophy of war. If they conquer and win a war, they can take the women as trophies. Now to make sure that nobody, none of the nayer uh, sayers out there would argue. Now we back it up with chapter four, verse three, where it says, if the girl is under age, as long as you pay for her enough money, you can have her too. So you put chapter four, verse three and chapter 33, verse 50 together, you have what Taliban are doing right now. They're allowed to get underage girls as war trophies that they just won and conquered Kabul. And then again, Mohammed also had a wife who was a six-year-old he consummated the marriage at age nine, being Aisha. So you put all of that together, they hold their head up and they say, we're doing what Sharia says we can and we should. There are no words other than I'm disgusted. There are stories in Afghanistan now of the Taliban grabbing cell phones from people on the street in Kabul. And if there's any mention of the Bible, meaning they've just grabbed a Christian or just someone interested in the Bible, there are stories appearing everywhere of these people being executed on the street instantaneously. Why is the world not crying out in unison against this horrific, barbaric terror? Why would they? They don't want to be Islamophobes. They don't want to make Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar upset. You, you remember, you actually... Um, you, you released a uh, short program from ATP mentioning that we're not allowed to code on code say anything Ilhan Omar says or we're Islamophobes. On that note, why would anybody say anything, Barry? Why would they say that they released a press release, Taliban, a spokesperson, put out a press release this morning. I heard it myself with my own ear in language of Pashto saying, to all the pastors out there, we know who you are. We know where you are. We're coming for you. They put that out this morning, telling pastors they're coming for them. But who cares? We want to appease Islam. We want to be nice to Muslims so we don't provoke them so they don't come at for us. So I understand your analysis regarding the very passionate jihadis that happen to be sitting in the seats of our sacred United States Congress, but the rest of the world is following the same program. God forbid we say anything for humanity that might be interpreted as against Islam. Yeah, pretty much. We have been doing it very, it's, it, it's coming up 20th anniversary of September 11. Look how normalized this jihad movement have become. Look how majority of people look the other way because they don't want to be Islamophobe. They don't want to be bigoted. They don't want to be labeled. Who cares about humanity? And that's exactly why Taliban can do what they're doing today. And Biden administration gets away with it. And Russia comes out and legitimize the Taliban uh, government. And they get away with it too. Well, you just took my next question out of my mouth. The world seems to be lining up to recognize this new terroristic regime in Kabul which is I think called the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Are they literally endorsing the mass murder and terror of this regime? And if so, why? Of course they are. And I'll tell you why, the same reason they all sent a congratulations to Ibrahim Raisi, the new president of Islamic Republic of Iran. There is, there is just one difference between Ibrahim Raisi and Taliban. 
The difference is Taliban runs at you screaming Allahu Akbar and beheads you. Raisi does it behind closed doors without screaming. That's the only difference because they're Sunni versus Shia. They, they endorsed and legitimized Ibrahim Raisi in Iran. Now they're doing it to Taliban. The reason is, again, the unholy alliance. I got to tell you, this is a truly sad day in American history. Um, this may turn out to be as horrible uh, as the Iran nuclear deal that Obama put together. And it's his protege, uh, Joe Biden, who's implementing it. It should come as no surprise. Um, from me to you, knowing what you've been through in Iran, uh, my heart goes out to you. Uh, it must just break your heart to see what's happening to the Afghan people. I do appreciate that. And yes, I'll be honest with you. I am on edge of reality versus PTSD dealing with it. But here's where we can be more afraid, Barry. This isn't just going to affect Afghan girls. This isn't going to just affect Iranian people. This is going to affect Israel and America not long from today. They will come for us. Well, God willing, it doesn't happen, but it may be a topic for a next show. Annie, tell people how they can find out more about what you're doing. Sure. Uh, I am regularly on American Truth Project. So check out americantruthproject.org. If you want to get more of me and not tired of it, go to liveuptofreedom.com. Very well said. And thanks for coming on. And for those of you that didn't get my little nudge at the beginning, please subscribe, take out your cell phone, text the word truth and send it to the number 88202, push send. We'll sign you up. You'll get more of Barry and Annie and everybody else at ATP. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for coming with us today.